Alrighty, let's get going on the review of the Starray Flight X Pro HD drone. I've had it for about a week now. I've done about 20 flights and I've got to know it pretty well. It's a good little flyer. It's very easy to use. There are a couple of limitations that you should know right at the start. It is a beginner's drone. Now when I say it's a beginner's drone, what I mean is if you want to get a drone for filming, this is probably not the best drone if you want to produce good quality video. If you just want to film or just get some basic shots, it'll work fine. It's got a good little camera there, but the camera's not gimbaled, so it's not going to stay level. As the drone moves, the camera moves as well. So your footage isn't going to be fantastic, but it does the job. The other thing that kind of makes it not a professional drone is it doesn't have a built-in GPS unit, so it doesn't know exactly where it is, which means it can't find its way home, and it doesn't have good position hold. So if you accept those two things, this is a great little drone, especially for the price. It's a really easy to set up, easy to fly drone. So let's get going with a few of the main points that I found after a week with this drone. So the controller buttons are fairly straightforward. It's actually what they call a mode two controller with the throttle on the left and the main controller on the right. That's the automatic takeoff. That's the automatic land. Throttle, as I said, is on the left, so up and down. That's rotate left, rotate right, or what we call your left, your right, which is rotating like that. And this joystick is forward and backwards, so pitching the uh, drone forward, pitching the aircraft back, and that's right and left, so banking left and banking right. You also have some buttons on the top here. This one here is your flip button which allows you to just do a little bit of a trick and it also if you hold it down automatically shuts off all of the propellers this button here so some of these buttons do work and some of them some of them don't work this button here is uh, to change the speed um, of the drone how fast it will react how fast it will fly that does work over here on the top is supposed to be camera on and off but that doesn't work I don't know why not but that doesn't seem to be what it does do something it changes the lights but it doesn't start the camera to start the camera you need to use the phone and this button here is supposed to be the fly home button um, or the heads up button and it does kind of work but yeah I fiddled with it and decided fairly quickly I'll just leave that button alone so these are the two buttons that I use for the trick and just to change the speed that you can fly at uh, so that's about it you've got trims left trim right trim back trim and forward trim that just controls the, the finer movements of this joystick here. So if it's just drifting a little bit, you can just trim it right. If it's just drifting forward a little bit, you can just trim it back. There's also a cradle at the bottom here for your smartphone. So that just pops out like that. And then you just pop your smartphone in there. It can hold quite a large smartphone. It's very well spring loaded. Uh, and your smartphone will just sit there and display uh, the video feed from the drone. And also a few controls. Uh, that's pretty handy, good to have. And that's about it. It's got three double A's in the back there, and it's got a couple of fake antennas on top. They don't do anything, so you don't have to worry about that. They're just, I don't even know why they're there. They're there for looks. <laughs> that's the controller. So to link the controller to the drone, we just turn the drone on first. We get our little blue lights on the top there. Our back LED is flashing. Our front LEDs are flashing. We turn our controller on. And then we initialize by forward throttle, back throttle. And you see the lights have gone solid. And the two are now paired and you're ready to fly. And then you're ready to go. Very straightforward. Easy to fly. All right, so once you have your controller linked up to the drone, you can also link up your iPhone. You probably should do that first. There's an app you download called the JYUFO app for your phone. That'll get you connected with the camera and a few other features. It's also the only way that I've found you can actually start the camera or take photos with the drone because the button on this doesn't seem to work. Uh, did everything I could to get it to work, but I couldn't get it to work. So. Flying with the camera, uh, sorry, flying with your phone is definitely a good idea, uh, especially if you want to take video. video.
One of the great things about this drone is it's really resilient to crashing. So when you do have an impact or you have uh, you hit a wall or something and the drone fl falls to the ground, these arms just fold when it hits the ground. The propellers also fold if you have a propeller strike on something and these little feet do detach if you do have a fairly heavy impact. You can also, there's a button on the controller, you can shut all the motors off and I've done that a couple of times from like two or three feet and it just drops to the ground and it lands fine, it doesn't seem to hurt it at all. What does happen from time to time is that the battery will disconnect when you have a landing, even not, not a heavy landing, just a fairly normal landing, auto landing, I sometimes do, about half the time. Disconnects the battery, shuts down the drone, so you do have to turn the drone back on and reinitialize with the controller. But so long as it's not way away, that's not a big deal. You can just walk over and get flying again. In terms of range, I found that the Wi-Fi link to your phone, your smartphone, is about 30 meters or so. Once you get to about 30 meters, the link between the drone and the video feed to your phone tends to start to drop out, starts to lock up. You do still have your micro SD chip in the bottom of the, well, presuming you install one, you've got the micro SD chip in the bottom of the drone, which is recording all the time that you hit record on the phone. It's going to be recording onto the chip but you're going to lose the feed at about 30 meters to your phone. The radio connection, which is different to the Wi-Fi connection, so the Wi-Fi connection is about 30 meter range. The radio connection, which is a 2.4 gigahertz standard radio control uh, frequency, is about 80 meters. And at about 80 meters, I was really having trouble figuring out which way around the drone was facing. So it's basically as far as you can see the drone, it'll stay locked on. And as soon as it loses connection, it just automatically goes into auto land. So it just starts to come down. So hopefully it's not over water or over a road, but it will automatically just descend to the ground if it loses the link with the controller. If it regains the link, I just found that if I was moving the throttle up and down and walking towards the drone, it would automatically catch, it would stop descending, and then I'd have full control again. So it seems to relink itself fairly easily. I never actually had it auto land completely, but I did have it come right down from fairly high up and then re, uh, re sync with the controller. So the video camera at the front is 720. The video is fairly good quality, but the frame rate is low. So you're not getting a very smooth video but you are getting fairly clear pictures. If you zoom in, it's, it's a bit pixelated and it's the contra you can muck around with it in post, it's contrasty, but it's actually not a bad little camera. And I guess, you know, this day and age, little cameras are fairly cheap. So they've put a pretty good one in here. It's just the frame rate that's, that, that lets the video footage down a little bit, but it's still okay, it's still usable. So long as you're not doing professional stuff, you'll get video with this, no problem at all. So to charge the battery from a power bank or any USB charger, you simply remove the battery, plug it in, and you've got your red light showing that your battery is now charging from a power bank or any other USB charger. In terms of battery life, I found it lasts about seven minutes. It's not a bad little battery pack. You probably want to buy some more online if you're going to fly this thing a lot, because uh, seven minutes isn't a long time big downside is it takes about two hours or more to charge the battery. That's a fairly long time for a fairly little battery. So you probably want to have a few on hand if you're going out into the field. You can charge it from the, the power bank as I've shown you, uh, but yeah, it does take a little while. One of the great features of this drone is it'll do flips for you automatically. All you have to do is press the little button on the front there and turn left or right and it'll do an automatic flip, just like this. So I press my little button, turn left, and now I've got a little flip. I want to go the other way, press the button, turn right, and I've got to flip that way. It's a great little feature, and it keeps the kids amused as well. <laughs> Probably one of the kids that it keeps amused. A couple of last points with this drone. Firstly, it doesn't like wind. It doesn't like a lot of wind at all. It does get moved around a lot in the breeze. So be careful if you're flying in anything other than a light breeze, it is going to drift. And you're probably going to need to set the response rates higher so that you can 
drive into the wind if it's starting to blow you around a bit. The other thing is you can link it to your phone and you can link it to your iPad at the same time, but because they're actually a controller and you can use them as a controller, you don't need this controller, you can fly with the, the app. I'm not sure how you would go by having both trying to control at the same time. It might get grumpy, you might lose control. I'd be very careful about what you're doing if you're going to link two devices to the Wi-Fi link on this at the same time. But you can do it and you can get video feed. And the video feed's fine if you just use the controller. I've flown with it like that. That works fine. But if you were going to control it with one of the two devices that you've got linked at the same time, that could end badly. So just be careful of that one. So there you have it, the Star 8 Flight X-Pro HD drone. I hope you've enjoyed this review. As always, if you have enjoyed it, please click the like button and subscribing would also help me and it'll help you find future videos that I post.